Welcome, everybody. This is The Split, a young adult book review podcast for readers and writers. I'm Brian Cohen, the author of <laughs> Ted Saves the World uh, and that series. And we've got Robert Scanlon, who's hardcore uh, author of The Dreamer Chronicles. How are you doing on this fine day that is the same day as the last two episodes we taped? No, 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 no. We're supposed oh, to pull come on. No. <laughs> come on. We taped several in a row. Life is crazy. It's still beautiful down here in Australia. How's it for you in Chicago? Is the polar vortex getting any warmer? Uh, I have not been outside. I am <laughs> avoiding it. I took out the trash for a moment. It was rough. And so... Still a polar vortex. Someone's still got to write the polar vortex book. Uh, th- th- this format will actually be really good for uh, remembering jokes from the last episode. I'm just realizing. <laughs> so that's so it's perfect that we're doing it this way. So, so tell me, Brian, what book is it this what week? What book? What book? We're do- going to talk about Cinder by Marissa Mayer. This book, I-, I I'd never heard of it. You told me about it. Uh, your daughter had read it, correct? Yeah, and man, I was blown away. This this book, so great. Let me tell you guys about it in case you haven't read it, and then we're going to go talk about it. So Cinder is a futuristic retelling of the classic Cinderella story set in uh, far off in the future China that details the life of a cyborg named Cinder, a prince named Kai, and a mysterious deadly plague. Instead of mice and fairy godmothers, the book uses androids and science to paint a vivid intergalactic struggle between good and evil. This is a multi-book series, and as soon as I finished this one, I write. I, I wanted to read the second. I, I feel like I'm not going to have time since we're we're reading a new book every week for this. But such a surprise. I'm really glad you brought it to my attention because it shows how much good work is out there that you don't even know about. Because this book was, it was really something else. Three-dimensional characters, twisty and fun storyline, and the final page, I, I just wanted to, it literally left an open door. There's literally an open door at the end of, of the book. What are your thoughts on Cinder? Oh, it's a crazy book, isn't it? Right from the get-go, it is just the hook is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we're not giving anything away by revealing that that Cinder is actually, in this case, a, a cyborg. So the twist on the glass slipper is the fact that she has a, an android foot. Mm-hmm. Um, she has she has her own retinal displays. It's set in a. I'd love to see this. I believe it's been commissioned for a movie. I'd love to see this as a movie uh, with Me kind too. of gritty. Blade Runner style esque sort of uh, future, you know. It's not, it's not a glossy future. It's definitely got its issues, and and uh, I particularly love the fact that you just didn't let up. I mean, Mm-mm. man, it just keeps going, and it's not. You know, sometimes books have too much action and Mm -hmm. it it wasn't that there was too much action. It's just that the, the, the plot was so cleverly executed and I, I did look at some of the – it has a few one-star reviews on on Amazon and you're kind of always curious as to what it was that people disliked about it. Sure. And I, and I can actually see the points they're making because they said, oh, it's really predictable and the plot twist is fairly easily deducible right from the get-go again. But hello uh, – the author's made it very obvious that it's a retelling of Cinderella. So, you know, if you don't know the Cinderella story, then maybe it's not as obvious. Yeah. And and for me, even though that was obvious to me, I still really loved the story. I just loved it and and the characters. And he didn't mention one of our favourite characters, which is uh, Eco or Ico, the oh, the man. little uh, the snappy snarky android. I just love it. Ico that. is yeah, so great. It, it's. Basically, if you if you've watched the Disney movie of Cinderella, it really is the replacement of the squeaky mice. But like she's sassy and funny and they say it's like a malfunction or whatever that that justifies it. So great. And yeah, I I, that was a great character there. There are so so much. uh, it, It was so fun. And it, it's a very addictive. It's a very addictive, very addictive book. I know there's three books in the series, but there's also a, a, 
a book from Queen Lavana's perspective. And I don't know if book three ends the series or not. I almost hope it does because I don't want to keep having to read more and more books, but also I, I do want to read. So let's talk about Cinder from a writer's perspective. Mm. If you're interested in adapting a book, adapting a story, this is a book to read because it, it takes it takes the plot in so many imaginative directions. I know you said some people said it was too predictable. I, I know the story and I still felt like it was there were a lot of aspects of it. Obviously, you know, like, oh, yeah, of course, she'll go to the ball. But that the ball didn't even matter that much. It was really all the things that happened in between. I had a lot of surprises throughout. Uh, what what do you, what did you think about this from a writer's perspective? From a writer's perspective, I think, you know, with this traditional Cinderella story, I don't know that you really get into Cinderella's head a lot. Mm. And I think what Gail Foreman did really beautifully with this is that you lived Marissa May. Cinder's. Oh, man, I'm so sorry, Marissa. <laughs> and I'm really sorry, Gail. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. They're both great. Thank you very much. But no, no worries. <laughs> but there you go. You see a couple of really good books. So I'm getting all mixed up. So yeah, Marissa Mayer did a beautiful job of writing from Cinder's point of view. And, in fact, it's not until about a third of the way through the book you actually get Prince Kai's point of view for the first time. So and that was kind of interesting that uh, she chose to bring in that, that next point of view mm-hmm. so late in a story. Normally, traditionally, you, you wouldn't do that, but it, it didn't matter. Um, and I did love that we got inside her head, you know, her frustrations, her mm-hmm. Uh, her flawed nature, um, her, in a way, kind of buried anger. And, yeah, it's uh, very – and I, I love the dialogue. I thought yeah. that some of the dialogue was just sensational in a oh, really yeah. – uh, oh, I love, wish I'd written that, you know. <laughs> uh, someday. Someday. Yeah, no, I totally agree. The, the, the other thing is, uh, aside from it being just so engaging and, and – this being the book to to look at also if you're trying to write a fast paced book it felt like the world really was another character in this book and i know that's a cliche of reviews and whatnot but this world you're you're seeing the junkyards the the market the palace the id bands to get into the into the apartment complex you're really seeing this world and and it and it's I don't know if it's because she used a, a deep point of view and and really described things from that character's point of view as opposed to just describing it as as a as a, a not attached narrator but I felt really in the world and I I think that that's something that I I I'm a big fan of Mary Buckham's uh, writing active setting and and that's if if she she Marissa Mayer just must have known uh, or or researched that sort of stuff beforehand because she was so good at getting you involved in the world. Absolutely, I think, um, and in fact, that probably leads me straight into a takeaway, really, uh, which is that if you're going to have a setting like this, then it's well worth doing some writing prior to writing your first draft mm. so that you understand how these things work. There's nothing worse than reading a book where she picked up the port screen aside. A port screen is a kind of a device where you communicate with other people. You just don't want that. And what um, Marissa does absolutely superbly is there is nothing is really explained. Well, there is a little bit of exposition from time to time about the politics and the wars, but in terms of the devices, you only ever find out about them in use. So Mm -hmm. the way you learn about them is because you observe the characters using them and you understand. And so, you know, I mean, she starts mentioning things like hovers. She doesn't explain what a hover is. No. And it's only later when they find a car that you understand that a hover is it's not a car, you know, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, so I thought it was beautiful, and I'm sure she must have done some active setting type writing prior. So my mm-hmm. first takeaway will be, you know, play with writing, describing a setting as if it's a character, and and put that in your research. Yeah, I totally agree. And one thing you were saying with the not explanation, 
you need to treat your readers as if they're intelligent. There, there's an an old improv quote: treat your audience like they're poets, geniuses, and scholars, and that's what they will become. And that's such a great way to write, and it's so it, it's such a way to to create any kind of art, but particularly yes. with writing, you don't need to hold their hands. People are going to generally figure it out. So one of my takeaways, which this ties into, is use your imagination to fill in the details of your world. Another great improv quote I got from a teacher, Ross White, was if that's true, what else is true? And mm. if you, yeah, I know, right? Uh, forever I will take that quote and use it. When you come up with one cool imaginative idea in your world, use that to jump into another thing. If that thing is true, if there are androids, are there also uh, cyborgs? If there's cyborgs, are there also flying cars? You know, use it to jump from one thing into another. So that's my takeaway. Uh, do you have another one? Because I have a second one in case you don't. Uh, no, I have another one. I want to go with it Do too. It. And uh, look, you know, we have these fairy tales in our in our culture and our history. And you think, could you possibly retell something that's been done and done and done and done over and over, and everyone knows it? But it comes down to the one of the the great things about any good story, which is great characters. Mm. A great character will bring any story to life, even if it's a fairly dull plot or, in this case, a plot that's extremely well known. Okay, it's got a couple of twists, but it's essentially the Cinderella story. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why it does come to life is because of Cinder and Ico and, and the way that she has twisted those original characters. And, and I just thought that was fantastic. So I would really say a takeaway from here is, you know, if you are interested in stories from a reader's point of view, what would you add to a character? Why is this? character so strong what is it that the author's done that really resonates for you and as a writer you know what can you do to to give this character more more pits more flaws more hopes more goals more dreams you know, things that make them real and and for me cinder was definitely that oh yeah by far that's great great uh takeaway and it leads right into my prompt of the week my prompt Fantastic. of the week is uh What's a classic fairy tale that you would want to adapt? What genre would you place it in and why? Simple. Uh, Cinderella, you never would have thought to put it in a futuristic world of robots and cyborgs, but it totally works. And you can move things. It, Shakespeare play adaptations are set in dozens of time periods with all sorts of wacky uh things placed upon them and and that's the you know the pinnacle the, the shakespearean play and that gets adapted in all sorts of different ways all the time take fairy tale take a classic story take anything in the public domain and and play with it but it has to like you said it has to have great characters it it has to it, it has to have a great world around it because just an adaptation of a good story on its own is not enough. You need to go further. You need to take it further. And deep point of view, the, the active setting can really help with that. So any other thoughts on this wonderful Cinder book by Marissa Mayer? No, just go and start writing. Write some old fable and turn it into something modernistic. And doesn't, when I say modernistic, suitable for our current culture but you mm. could set it in the past you could set it in the present you could set it in the future you could set it in another planet yeah so, lots of fun yeah i completely agree if you want to write from the prompt or anything based on this review post it in the comments or on youtube or on our website or tweet some parts of it to us when we have a twitter account we'll have all that information posted in our youtube comment section or on our description for the podcast on itunes so this was great hey that's our that's our fifth review robert how do you feel about that oh, i feel like i've been reading some excellent books and i've also gained some insights from a book i didn't particularly like so i'm enjoying this it's forcing me to read books that i wouldn't necessarily 
seek out as urgently. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I would read them for sure because I'm always interested in things that bubble to the top of charts, things that are designed to be, uh, you know, that are going to be made uh, for the cinema. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. And you? Yeah, I'm liking these so far. I, I slacked off on reading the last few years and, and this is really bringing me back and it's exciting. I, I listened I listened to all of these as audiobooks uh, because my time is <laughs> negative. But I, I'm really enjoying it and I'm learning a lot and I think that it's helping my writing, which is one of the reasons that we started this podcast was to become better yes. writers. So yes. good stuff, good takeaways, everything's great. For Robert Scanlon over there in Australia, I'm Brian Cohen here in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm freezing. Uh, Thank you guys for listening and watching. Subscribe, comment, do everything you do with podcasts and video shows that show that you like us, if you do like us. So (laughs) thank you guys for listening. We will be back next week with something else. Have a wonderful, awesome, cool week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you guys for watching. Somewhere on this page is a subscribe button to the Split channel. We do reviews every week. We would love it if you followed us every single week. Isn't that right, Robert? That's exactly right. Follow us now. Hit the subscribe button. Do it. Do it.